was struggling about what to come and speak on this morning. I prayed, spoke to God last night as well. And I wasn't sure of what he wanted me to share. But while I was preparing this morning, he dropped a message. And I believe that that is what he wants us to receive this morning. And the choir also confirmed it. Amen. Amen. The choir also confirmed it. Uh, God wants to let us know that He's missing us. Tell someone God is missing you. God is missing you. Yes, yes. And the, the subject I received is, is broad, but I'm going to limit it to just some few areas. And then if I have some time in the future, I would. Uh, Try to go back to it. Revelation is chapter 1. But before that, let's, let me just read 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. I'm reading from the New Kingdom Version. And the Bible says that for this reason, I will not neglect, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. Though you know and I establish in the present truth. Amen. Amen. So the apostle is saying is what he's saying is that I just want to remind you of things you already know. So these are not things that you don't know. Uh, someone has said that a, long, a short pencil is better than a long memory. Meaning that no matter how long your memory is, you are subject to forgetfulness. You can forget some way, somehow. But if you have things written down, even when you forget and you pick the book, you'll be able to recollect whatever you wrote down. That's why it's always good to, don't just listen in church, but at least try to write something down. Try to make some notes. It's very important. Uh -huh. It's very important. So when you're coming to church, get your Bible, get your tablet, and just jot down some notes. Back to Revelation chapter 1. I'll read from 9 to 11, and then from chapter 2, 1 to 7. I might not give a lot of scriptures today, because like I said, I want to limit this subject to just an area. And then we will have the Lord's Supper, have a baby dedication, have fellowship, and then we can go home. Revelations 1, 9 to, 9 to 11. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation, and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I pray that you will be in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What you see right in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pegabus, to Tithyria, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Chapter 2, 1 to 7. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his hand, in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works. Tell someone I know your works. I know your works. And the Bible says, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. That's three. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. That's four. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I'll come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Six. But this you have, that you hid the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hid. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst 
of the paradise of God. May the Lord bless his word. Um, speaking this morning on the subject, let us return to our first love. Amen. That is a message God gave me this morning. Let us return to our first love. Tell someone, let us return to our first love. Let us return to our first love. And like I said, I, I, this is a broad subject that I will need another time maybe to talk details about other areas. But this morning, I want to just limit it to the signs that you have lost your first love. And I'll be talking about 15 signs that God gave me. 15 signs that you have that, that shows that you have lost your first love. And it's not to just point and accusing fingers at you, but just so we get back to where God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Amen. The choir sang a song and it said that I will not go back, I cannot go back. Hallelujah. Amen. And we cannot go back. Someone sang a song and said, when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never turn back anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. I will never turn back anymore. We don't have to go back. We cannot go back. It's impossible for us to go back. It's impossible. We can't. We shouldn't go back. So this morning, God is saying, let us return to our first love. Our first love. Now, Jesus said a whole lot of things about the the, the church in Ephesus. He says so many good things about them. And I believe that if he should appear now, he would have so many good things to say about us. He would talk about how wonderful the choir ministers. He would talk about how, how good we come to church early. He would talk about how nice we are dressed. Hallelujah. He would say a whole lot of good things about us. But he said, nevertheless, there's this thing I have against you. How do you feel when someone comes to you, someone that you think that you love, you have so much good relationship with, and they come to you and say, oh, the Jima, I have this one thing against you. And sometimes they don't tell you right there and then, but it takes days for them, especially when somebody comes to you and says, there's something I want to talk to you about. And then you begin to wonder, what is it? And then you wish they would tell you right there and then. Jesus said, you're doing so well as PIWC, presiding, you're doing so well. But there's this thing I have against you. He said, nevertheless, you have lost your first love. Or like I said, you have lost your first love. <laughs> yes, love is not that powerful. If you say love, that's more powerful. So he said that nevertheless, you have lost your first love. Ask someone, where is your first love? Don't say, where is your first love? Where is your first love? Danny, she's not looking, looking, looking into your face. Tell her to look into your face. Where is your first love? He said that you have left your first love. Nevertheless. So all the works that we are doing is good. All the things that we are doing is good. But there's one thing that is needful. Look, you have left it. Years ago, in my early stages of marriage, I would buy so many things for my wife, which I still do. And, 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 and I thought that, okay, with the things that I buy for her, she should be happy. Because that should be enough. You know. So I'll buy this, I'll buy that, buy gadgets and all that. So one day, I asked him that, ah, I realized... You're not so excited when I buy stuff like that for you. Is there anything wrong? Is there something that, is it that you don't like the things or what? And she said that I appreciate all the things you do. But the, the real thing that I want is you. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about the things, but it's about the love. The love. Hello. The love. Hallelujah. So God, Jesus is saying that, I like the way you minister in the church. I like the way you come to church early. I like the way you put everything on and all that. Your church is nice and all that. But there's one thing I have against you. That you have left your first love. You have left your first love. And now when Jesus talked about you have left your first love, he was not suggesting that you have no love for me. That's not what he's he will be he was not suggesting that you don't have love for me. No, you still have love for him. But what he's saying is that 
the genuine, the first love, the kind of love that you used to have, the level that it used to be has dropped. And I want you to get back to that level. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you look at the Greek meaning of left, it's the same word that is used in divorce. So Christ is saying that you have divorced, you have left that kind of love. The things that you used to do. Hallelujah. I know some of you are married here, or, or quite a number of you are married here. You realize that there are some things that your spouse used to do that they don't do that anymore. Am I talking in the house? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if your husband wife is in the house, look into their face. No, no, look here, look here, look here. Yes, tell them. Hallelujah. Because you remember when they first met you, met you. I can't breathe without you, man. I can't do it without you. We can just go for a walk. Oh, I remember when I first met my wife. Oh. Can I can I tell you? When Bible studies is over. Around 8 o'clock p.m., I'll go and see her off her home. And as soon as we get, get to the, the gate of your house, we'll stand there and chat a little bit. And then when it's time for me to go, she'll say, oh, let me also go and see you off. And then she'll go and see me off. And when I'm approaching where I live, I said, no, it's too late. I don't want you to work alone. Let me see you off. You see, so it was like that, back and forth, back and forth. The things we used to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. The things we used to do. Jesus is saying that you have left your first love. The things that you used to do. And this morning, there's a call on all of us to get back. Amen. There's a call on all of us. Um, you see, I'm not preaching to you, but I'm preaching to myself too. Hallelujah. This morning, the preaching is not just about you. It's about everyone in the house, myself included. We have left the place we used to, we used to be. Some of you see how you used to send text messages to your spouse, even when you are at work. I hear my wife, but I'm missing you. Uh -huh. And now sometimes when they are away, they, 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 they check their phone to see whether any text has come. Or nothing is coming. <laughs> Tell someone, let us return. So I'm quickly going to talk about 15 seconds. 15 seconds. We're still close on time at 11.30 with all the Lost Supper and our offerings and our baby day. Please, we'll close at 11.30. So 15 seconds. Sign number one that you have lost your first love is that there's no more God first. The first sign that you have lost your first love is no more God first. first. You remember years ago how you used to put God first in everything that you would do. In any decision that you would make, you look at God first. Even when it comes to relocation for a job, you think about God first. When I find a church there that I can worship, you put God first in every single thing that you did. But now God has been relegated to the background and all other things come first. Hallelujah. How you are so much in love with God that you would always say, I have to pray about this before. I have to pray about this before. I remember years ago when you, when you tell a young lady that, oh, you know what, I want to go out with you and start a relationship with you and all that. The first thing they will do is, I want to pray about it first. I want to talk to God about it first. But now it's not like that. The wonder marriages are breaking in our time. Because we have left God out of it. And we only bring Him in when we need Him. The first sign is, there's no more God first. No more God first. The question to you and I is that, is God the first in everything that you do? Number two, 
It's a lot, so I, I'll, I'll have to rise. Number two. The second sign you have lost your first love is that Christianity is more of a checklist than a relationship with Christ. It's more of a checklist. I would explain. It's more of a checklist than a relationship with Christ. It's more of the thing I have to do. Oh, it's Sunday. Okay. These are the things I have to do. Church. This, that, that. It has become a checklist. It's part of the things I have to do. No, Christianity should not be like that. You have to be a Christian 24-7. Am I talking here? Yes. You have to be a Christian 24-7. And even on social media, you have to be a Christian. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. God and relationship with Christ cannot be a checklist. I've given to God what is what is what is God saying to let me do other stuff. Hallelujah. We cannot do that. He cannot become a check a checklist. Number three, communication with him becomes burdensome. So as I'm talking, begin to check yourself. The first one is, what's the first one? No more God for a second. The second one is what? And the third one is what? Communication becomes burdensome. Those of you who are married, look at how you used to chat with your spouse for hours. And I hope you remember. <laughs> those days, those days, we didn't have all those WhatsApp and whatnot. Sometimes you have to buy a, a, a phone card, credit. You buy, you talk, and it's done. And you buy another one, you talk, and it's done. And you buy another one, you talk, and you, and you didn't care how much you were spending. Because you were in love. Yeah. But now communication, because the love dropped, communication has become burdensome. You only talk about issues, but not about yourselves. Jane, am I preaching? Hallelujah. It has become burdensome. And in the same way, because your love has dropped, prayer has become burdensome. Prayer. A child of God. If you are really in love with God, you realize that prayer is a thing that you just love to do. He said, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul long after thee. When shall I appear before him? When shall I come before this my maker? When shall I have an intimacy with him? But because the love has dropped, prayer has become burdensome. You pray two minutes and you start yawning. You come to church and it's, it's prayer time and, and you are looking at the time. You are saying to yourself, when will this time move fast? It means you have lost your first love. Am I talking to someone? Yes. You are praying and all you are, you are, you are, you are trusting the Lord is that the prayer leader will just close their, they do this. So that we, the prayer will be over. So before they stop the prayer, you have stopped. But you remember that when the love was there, even when they stop the prayer and they are trying to release another topic, you are praying. You are, you, you are so much in the thing. Hallelujah. Prayer has become burdensome. When was the last time you spent time with God alone in prayer? When was the last time? Even 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you were just there with God. Alone with God. Alone with God. And now we have God, we have become so familiar with God to the extent that even whilst we are praying, we have our cell phones with us. We have our cell phones with us. And when someone calls, we have the audacity to tell God, hold on. And then you pick your cell phone. But if you were talking to the president, or if you were talking to the company that is trying to offer you the job, if you were on the phone with them and someone had called you, would you tell the company, hold on? No. So why would you tell God, hold on? Okay. Because you have lost your first love. This morning, let us return. Amen. This morning, let us return. Amen. I'm the one preaching. Look at, look at me. I'm the one preaching. Let us return this morning.
this morning. Prayer has become burdensome. I'm not against me singing in church. I love music. I'm always, you know, there's always a song in my Margaret, you're welcome. There's always a song in, 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 my, in, my, in my mind. I'm always singing and praying. But you realize that sometimes you are so comfortable when you come to church and we are just singing. You are enjoying it. But when the prayer warrior comes to take the mic and say, we want to pray. Now you want to go and use the bathroom. May God have mercy on us. This morning, let us repent. I said this morning, let us what? Repent. Everyone person clapping. That's okay. I know that preaching will give me a lot of clapping, but I'll preach. I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Let us return. Go back to the place where we used to be. Hallelujah. Donnie McLeggan said, I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Let's go back to the place of prayer. Years ago, I wrote a book. And the title of the book was No Bible, No Breakfast. No Bible, No Breakfast. And so until I have my quiet time, I'm not eating breakfast. And I think that is where we all need to go back to. Amen. I'm not going to have breakfast until I've had time with God. The giver of life. Sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you are so much busy with, with your you know, daily stuff. And God is just sitting down looking at you. And God is asking you, what do you say that to me? Don't you know I'm the giver of life? Do you know what is ahead of you? Don't you know I already know what is ahead of you? You are so much in a hurry and you have left God behind. He's supposed to be first in everything. I said he's supposed to be first in everything. He's supposed to be first in everything. Let us return to our first love. Prayer should not be burdensome. Prayer should be a thing we enjoy. I remember when we had the all night prayer. A lot of people came to me and said, Pastor, we did not even see how the time went. The time was, when we the time we realized, the time was over already. And we're praying for hours. You see, get to the place where, where, where you, you, when you get into the presence of God in prayer or in worship, you don't even want to come out. Hallelujah. Because you are there with the lover of your life. You are there with him. Remember years ago, from when you first married, you didn't have any children. You were just there with your spouse. And you could be in indoor for the whole day. And you didn't feel like going anywhere because you were enjoying the company. And I remember, you were just enjoying the company. No, don't look at me as if you are too holy like that. You were just enjoying, remember, you were just enjoying the company. You were just there. May God have mercy. Amen. I can't stay long on this for this topic because I have a lot. Number four. Number four. Now the fourth sign, in case you just join us, I'm talking about signs that you have lost your first love. The fourth sign is that sin is no longer a big deal. You are not grieved by it. Sin is no longer a big deal. Sin is no longer a big deal. Sin is no longer a big deal. You are not grieved by it. You are not grieved by it. You are not give grief by it. You remember the first time you committed a kind of sin? That you were so sorry you went to God in prayer. You cried. You fasted. You said, God, I don't want to do this anymore. Are we together here in the church? Yes. You said, God, I don't want to return to this anymore. I'm your child. Forgive me. I don't know why this happened, Lord. Have mercy on me. And now when the first love dropped, the sin has become normal. It has become an okay thing. Because everyone is doing it. And let me tell you, church, that one of the dangerous places you can be is to get to the place where your guilty conscience is no more there. Because you've committed a kind of sin for over the times, and now, now, now you are used to it. So he says, it's a normal thing. It's a normal thing. You can do it and come and stand in church and hold the mic and you think, you think it's okay. But I can assure you that we are getting to a season that whatever you do in the closet, if it's not pleasing to God, when you come in public, it will be exposed. Yeah. I said it will be exposed. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
I remember one time I had an all night somewhere in one of our districts we passed it. And then the Lord said, this week that you were fasting, a boy and a girl committed, fornicated. So at the all night, the Spirit of God reminded me, and I said it, you are here. A boy and a girl, you fornicated, God said to come out. And you see, you see, you see, one, by the grace of God with all humility, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not here, I'm not, I don't preach to please anyone. And so when I receive the word like that, and you don't come out, it doesn't make me feel bad. I said about three or four times, they didn't, they didn't come out. I said, okay, because I know I heard from God. Now, when I got home, soon as I got home, I saw a car parked in front of my house. And it was this boy and the girl waiting for me at home. They said, say, Pastor, we were the one. <laughs> Somewhere you're going to the restaurant. It's 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 it's, it's like trying to come over. Hallelujah. Sin is no longer a big deal. But child of God, if you are if you are in a genuine relationship with God, sin is always a big deal. I said sin is always a big deal. And don't tell me that oh this 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 in, in, in this place that I used to be, we used to call this sin, but over here it is no more sin. No. The Bible cuts across everywhere. What is sin in Jamaica is sin in the United States. What is sin in Canada is sin in Nigeria. Is sin in the United States of America. Is sin in Europe. The fact that other people are doing it doesn't make it right. Hallelujah. In the days of Daniel, the Bible says that Daniel is the one who the night. Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defy himself for the apostle of the king's name. He purposed in his heart. He purposed in his heart. He purposed in his heart that me, I have a relationship with God and I will never do things against God. May that be our situation. Amen. May that be our situation. Remember, I was so sad when I got here, uh, got to America years back, and one of our one of our friends that we used to be in the same uh, uh, school with, someone that we were all looking up to, a Christian. Strong Christian, we thought it was a good character to follow. And so when I got here and I got wing, uh, got knowledge that he was here, I tried look for, looking for his number and I called him. When I called him, I said, oh, I was just calling to let you know I'm, I'm here and all that. And through the conversation, so I've realized that this guy has backslided and now he's, he's, he's into alcoholism and all that. But this is someone who we thought was an example of Christ that we could look up to. Child of God. After years have gone and come, and we see you, may we see Christ in you. Yeah. After years have gone and come, when we see you, may we see that you have moved higher in the things of God. Love thee more. By day. Amen. Beloved, sin is still sin. You see, you see, understand something that the Holy Spirit is a Holy Spirit. Are we together? The Holy Spirit is a Holy Spirit. And he lives in a holy body. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is a holy spirit. And he lives in a holy body. We cannot be a church that endorses sin. The Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. The church of God must be righteous, spiritual. The church of God must, must be on fire in righteousness to the extent that when you have come to church and you are living in sin, you will not feel comfortable. You shouldn't feel comfortable.
comfortable in the presence of God if you are a sinner. When we get to the place where people can be in sin and feel comfortable in the house of God, then we are missing it. It's not a church anymore. You should not feel comfortable when you are going to do some things last night and there's no supper and you are jumping to come and eat the Lord's supper. You shouldn't feel comfortable. Because he said, I'm coming for a church without spot. Or, oh, you will not like the preacher today, but I, I won't stop preaching at all. I'll preach. But the way some of you are looking at me, I won't stop at all. I'll preach. I will preach. Because I'm in charge to preach the all adulterated word of God. There are two people are clapping. That's okay. Thank God. At least two people. That's fine. That's fine. You see, we need to check the way. If we say, if, if I say I'm a Christian, let people see the Christ in me. Christ in you? Christ in you? Let people see the Christ in me. Christianity is not a talk, talk stuff. It's not telling people I'm a Christian. People must see the Christian in me. Somebody comes to you and say, you know what? The way you are, are you a Christian? I want to follow you to your church. That is the highest form of evangelism, if in case you don't know. It's not just it's not the preaching. But if somebody, if your life can shine before men, and they will see and give glory to your father. Amen. Even that's your highest form of worship. Amen. It's not singing. It's not singing. Your highest form of worship is somebody comes and says, Wow, Danny. Your light is so shiny. I want to follow you. Your lifestyle. Your lifestyle. So if sin has become, it's, it's no more a big deal, then you have left your first love. Number what? Five. Number five, the fifth sign that you have lost your first love is that you have, you have broken relationship with other believers and you are unwilling and have not attempted to reconcile. You have broken relationship with other believers and you are not willing and you've not even made any attempt to reconcile. You don't talk to believers. You're okay. They are not in my class. Look at them, but these this people are not in my class. Yeah, they're not in my class. That's how they do it. They're, 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 they're not in my class. I don't know why they are drawing in there. They're not in my class. But you, what class are you in? What class are you in? We are all in one class. The class that is bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. The class that is on the way to heaven. We are all in just one class. We are sinners and we have been saved by the same blood. In one class. In the presence of God, we are all equal. We are all equal. Doesn't matter your status outside. Whether you are the CEO of what company or you are the vice president or whatever. In the presence of God, we are all equal. Amen. And so if you, if you are broken this, even right here in church, you don't talk to some people. You don't talk to some people. When some people grab the mic to minister, you're like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. When somebody dresses and you look at them and say, well, this would have been nicer for me. <laughs> somebody dresses in church and you're like, what colors are these? Is it a traffic light or what? <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. If you have broken relationship with the child of God, you have left your first love. Amen. Go back and get it. Amen. Because he said that, beloved, let us love. Anyone who says they know God but they don't love, it's not of God. Hallelujah. If you are saying, oh, I'm a child of God, I'm a, but you don't love one another, you are missing it. You are missing it. Today, right after church, take someone and tell the person, you know what? What you did was painful, but I've forgiven you. Amen. I said, after church, take someone, call someone, and forgive someone. Amen. Because the truth is, forgiveness is not up for, your, for, for the person's sake. 
is for your own sake. Sometimes you are praying for hours. The reasons why your prayer is not being answered is just because you have held someone in your heart. Just release the person. Let go of the person. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you think that people have, have offended you so bad, ask yourself. The people that you have offended, do you know? You have offended so many people. Even the way you were walking today was an offense to someone. Yes. yes. The cologne you use today was an offense to someone. Someone smells it. Why did I come to sit by this person? What kind of smell is this? Mm. Forgive. Tell someone forgive me. Forgive. Tell someone forgive me. Forgive. Ah, forgive. Number six. Number six, the sixth sign that you have lost your first love is that you are not proud to speak of your faith like you used to. You are not proud to speak of your faith like, like you used to. So in future, get a, a good notebook and not a, a paper. Yes, no, no, I'm on you. I'm on you. Everyone who is just writing on paper, you will throw it away. Get a good notebook next time. Oh, me, listen, listen, you, you, all of you are my church members. I'll fight you every Sunday if you don't do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are not proud to speak of your faith like you used to. You remember years ago how you used to talk about your faith? I'm a Jesus girl. I don't do these things. Period. I don't do them. Years ago, your friends knew that if they come and talk to you about this kind of things, you will not agree because as for you, you are a Jesus person. They knew that. If people can be comfortable to be cursing around you, to be saying all sorts of things around you, then it means that, listen, your light, your light, your, your fire is, 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 is going down. People should not be comfortable to do some things around you because they know that the, your level of spirituality you cannot entertain some of these things. You used to speak about your faith. I'm a Christian. Isn't it so funny and interesting and weird now that the believer can go to the restaurant with other, other co-workers, yet they can't tell the co-workers, I want us to pray before we eat. Because they don't want to offend them. Really? You don't want to offend them? Then you are not a Christian yet. Because you shouldn't be ashamed to talk about your God in public. Can I get a witness? You shouldn't be ashamed to talk about your God in public. If somebody is not ashamed to smoke outside, they are not ashamed to be kissing outside. I shouldn't be ashamed to talk about that Jesus, the one who has saved me and taken me to heaven. I shouldn't be ashamed to talk about him. I should not be ashamed at all. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. You don't want anyone to know that you have anything to do with Jesus. In the name of, I don't want to offend anyone. No. If you're a true Christian, you would always offend someone. If you're a true Christian, you would always offend someone. Listen, you cannot fit him. He said, I wish you were either, either uh, uh, hot or what? Cold. 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 You have become lukewarm. You look like warm. And you are not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Child of God. Let us go back to those days. Remember years ago when you were chatting with friends and you would hear them say, you know what? The Bible says this. The Bible says that. Years ago, how many of you remember when you were chatting with friends and they would say, well, the Bible says this. Well, now we don't say that anymore. Let us be proud to talk about our faith. Amen. If you know that what we have is the best, Amen. if you know what you have is the best, Amen. you will talk about it. Amen. You will talk about it. I have witnessed not what anyone told me, but I have witnessed with my eyes. I have witnessed, witnessed a Muslim whose house was burning when I was in Ghana. His house was burning. He was, he was, the, he was a security guy. The house was burning. But it was 6 o'clock or 5 or whatever the time they pray. And this guy was, has knelt an elder and he was praying and the house was burning. Because he knew that at that time he had to talk to God. When 
it's time for a Muslim to pray. They don't care who is around. They don't care who is around. They will stop whatsoever they are doing and pray. But look at the believer. We think that we are under grace. Everything is okay. Like someone will say, oh, let, 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 well, if we can go and confess, God will forgive us. Really? I was surprised when, when a matured Christian made this statement. He said that, oh, now, nowadays, it, it doesn't matter how you, you rise to the top. It doesn't matter which means you use. When you get to the top, you can always confess. Wow. And I said, really? You have missed it. You can confess when you get to the top. And it doesn't matter the means you use. May God have mercy on us. May God have mercy on us. You see, the ch child of God, the Christian life, the journey is not any way, any how you want to live your life. It's not. Because you remember when you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you lifted up your hands and you said, and you said I surrender all. Amen. I surrender what? All, everything. My will, my mind, my body, everything I surrender all to you. So literally you are saying that I am dead to sin. I am a slave to righteousness. What has changed? What has changed? You are not proud to talk about your faith anymore. You are not proud of it. You don't even want people to know you are holding a Bible. But those of you who have been in the law for some time, years ago, you remember, we used to hold the Bible like this. Then I remember, on campus, yeah, we hold the Bible like this. And people used to tell, they understand, the term they used to call us, Crefe people. Crefe people. I remember in my own church in Ghana, they used to call me Brother Spirit. That was the name. I asked my wife, she tell you. So even among the Christians, they were calling you Brother Spirit. Not, not among the unbelievers, among your own Christian brothers. <laughs> the guy who sees men as trees. He said, oh, he sees women as trees. The guy who sees women as trees, Brother Spirit, that's how he used to call me. Child of God, let us, tell somebody, let us be proud of our faith. Let us be proud of our faith. Be proud of it. Let me be proud of it. What number? Yes. Number seven. You have the sign that you have lost your first love is that you try to fit in everywhere. Mm. You try to fit in everywhere. You become like a paper to the wind. Whichever direction it blows, you follow. You fit in everywhere. You fit in everywhere. You are in church on Sunday, but by Monday, Tuesday, when other people are doing their stuff, you just join them. Hallelujah. Child of God, if you are a Christian, be a Christian. If you are not, don't be a Christian. Are we together? If you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. Don't try to fit in. Because if you try to do that, you'll be amongst all men, the most miserable. You'll be amongst all men the most miserable. Because you will find your way in hell. Oh, I'm, 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 I will tell you the truth. You will find your way in hell. And the thing is that you was on earth, you didn't really enjoy. Because you were trying to go with the Christians and also trying to go with the worldly people. I would rather be an unbeliever and enjoy sin. And enjoy sin with the knowledge that I'm going to hell. Then be a lukewarm person. I'm here and there, and then find my way in hell. But I want to suggest to you: don't try to fit in. Change the world. Don't let the world change you. Amen. I said what? Change the world. Don't let the world change you. Overcome darkness. Don't let the darkness overcome you. Don't let the world tell you this is how we do it. Tell the world that this is how it's supposed to be done. This is how it's supposed to be done. Don't let them tell you this is how we do it. I've always told, told, told young ladies that listen, 
You are not a car at the car garage where people have to test drive before they buy you. Sometimes you're working with a guy in a relationship and they want to sleep with you before they marry you. Tell them, listen, until you marry me, you are not going to sleep with me. Amen. Well, I won't get a lot of emails, but that's okay. Amen. Until you marry me, you cannot sleep with me. Listen, and if they have done it before, going forward, stop. Amen. Look at me. Going forward, stop. Amen. I said, I don't allow him to leave you. I said, let him what? Leave you. It means they are not for you. I said, you don't know. The way I'm in love with this person, Pastor, you don't know. Everyone wants this person. But I'm the only one who he chose. So, Pastor, if I don't do everything he wants, Pastor, you. Listen, somebody made a statement. Are you listening? Yes. Let your mind be here. Are you listening? Somebody made a statement. He said, he said, I met him. He wanted it. I allowed him and I lost him. And the other one is, I met him. He wanted it. I did not allow him and I kept him. If you give them what they have to struggle to get, they will leave you. Because if a man really wants you and loves you, he will wait. I said, if a man loves you and really, really loves you and wants you, he will wait. I'm preaching. And don't look this one. I didn't say let's read the Bible. Don't look at your Bible. Look at me. I said it all, you are not looking to your Bible. Look at me, I'm the one who are preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What number was that? Seven. Okay, I said how many? Fifteen. I have eight more. But I want to pause here because of my time. Now, by the grace of God, next Lord's Supper, I will preach here. Amen. And I will continue on this one. Next Sunday. That's the next Sunday. Next Sunday. Don't have to continue next Sunday. Okay, next Sunday we'll continue with this one. We'll talk about this one. This one. Amen. God bless you. God bless you too. So you have known this. So number one, first sign is what? Uh huh. Number two. Number three. Number four. It's no more big deal. Number five. Number six. I didn't hear. Not proud to speak about it. You're not proud to speak of your faith anymore. Number seven. Try to fit in. Obey the way. Now, next week, I'm going to stay on this one. Try to fit in, and we'll continue. May the Lord bless all of us. Amen. So, you want to be on.